educational satellite television programs. Hello teacher, hello students. Welcome to today's lesson on types of behavior. This lesson will be a continuation from our previous lesson on behavior. In our last lesson, we learned about instincts and the biological clock in animals. We learned that instincts are innate tendencies of a living organism toward a particular behavior. For example, an instinctual behavior in birds is building a nest. We also learned about biological clocks in animals. A biological clock is a physiological process in animals that enable them to live harmoniously with the rhythms in nature, such as the season or the time of day. In today's lesson, we will be discussing learned behavior in animals. We will define what learned behavior is we will look at two types of learned behavior, habituation and sensitization. Let us begin our lesson, students. We have learned in our previous lesson that instincts are innate in animals. They are born with a pattern of behavior that is characteristic of a species and is often a response to specific environmental stimuli. Animals also respond to certain stimuli with learned behaviors. Students, what do you think learned behaviors are? Take a few minutes to write down any examples of learned behavior you can think of. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, everyone. I wonder what ideas and examples you thought of. You may have said that learned behavior is an animal's way to respond based on experience. You could have said that learned behavior is a type of behavior animals acquire through experiences. These answers would be correct. A correct example you could have said would be a dog learning how to sit. In your textbooks, learned behavior is defined as behavior that is acquired through experience, such as trial and error, or through insight. Learned behaviors are usually not fully functional the first time they are performed. As we mentioned in our definition, trial and error is a way to acquire learned behavior. Trial and error simply brings about an improvement in the effectiveness of the behavior pattern. There are many different types of learned behaviors. In this lesson, we will be looking at two types, habituation and sensitization. Habituation is the process in living organisms in which there is a decreased response to a stimulus after repeated exposure to that stimulus over a period of time. Habituation can occur at different levels in the nervous system. Sensory habituation happens when the sensory systems stop sending signals to the brain in response to a continuously present or often repeated stimulus. It is also when the brain still perceives the stimulus is present, but has simply decided to no longer pay attention to it. An example of habituation in humans is when we walk into a room and immediately notice a strong odor. If we stay in that room, over time, we don't notice the odor anymore. This is an example of humans' sense of smell demonstrating habituation. The sense of smell stops responding to the odor even though it is still present. Let us look at another example of habituation. Watch this video of an experiment. As we can see in the video, over time, the mouse does not react to the sound. It takes a few repetitions of the sounds, but soon the mouse does not respond to the sound. Let us do an activity about habituation. Based on what we have learned so far, can you explain how habituation affects behavior in animals. Take a few minutes to write your answer on a piece of notebook paper. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. If you said that habituation affects behavior in animals by allowing the animal to adapt to something familiar by repeated stimulus in order to preserve the ability to react to new stimulus, then you answered correctly. An example of how habituation affects animals is when animals become more comfortable with humans or stop fearing humans. Over time, the animals are comfortable being closer to them than they naturally would. The next learned behavior that we are going to talk about today is sensitization. Sensitization is an increase in response to a harmless stimulus when the stimulus occurs after a harmful stimulus. In higher animals, such as humans, peripheral sensitization refers to sensitization that results from changes in the neurons of the peripheral nervous system. Central sensitization refers to the same process, but occurring in the neurons of the central nervous system. Research using the sea slug Aplesia has provided scientists with much information on how sensitization works in animals. When the siphon of the aplesia is gently touched, normally it causes the slug to withdraw its gill. However, if a gentle touch is followed by an electric shock to the tail of the snail, the gill withdrawal response will be much stronger. The mildly painful stimulus affects the reflex that controls the gill to withdraw. If the snail is touched and then shocked multiple times, when the snail is only touched without a shock following, the snail will not withdraw its gill. This shows that the snail has been sensitized to touch. As we can see from this example, when something that is harmless is followed by something that is harmful, an association is made between the two and can lead to an anticipated response. As a review to what we just learned, students, please write out the definition of sensitization. You may begin now. Students, let's get ready. <laughs> begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Hello again, everyone. I hope you were able to recall the definition from our lesson. Sensitization is an increase in the response to a harmless stimulus when that stimulus occurs after a harmful stimulus. If this was what you wrote down, then you answered correctly. Great work today, students. This brings us to the end of our lesson for today. We learned and defined the term learned behavior, and we looked at two types of learned behaviors, habituation and sensitization. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.